Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and it was just another day for me trying to look at a hair restoration device. I can't wait to film that. Anyway, that's not what this video is about because I wanted to see if this was drawing anything before I got started on the video, just in case it was just a faulty battery. So I plugged in my amp meter into here, got the lead, charging lead, that goes from here into here, and all of a sudden my amp meter no longer works. This has been with me since the very beginning. This was sent in to me with a load of stuff by a, a viewer called David, and I'm gutted that it's not working. So it still allows the charge to pass through it, but yet it's not actually, uh, it's not actually coming up for anything, but sometimes it will come up with the voltage here if I don't plug anything into it. But then when I plug things into it, is it going to start to... There you go, it's, it's here now, can you see? Well, you probably can't see because it's so faint, but uh, every now and then it will come up with the, uh, the voltage just here. But that should be nice and bright. But then when you plug something in, nothing happens. So somehow, by plugging in the hair restoration device, it has caused this to go faulty. Now I've got a feeling it's probably going to be glued shut, so it's going to be a bit destructive getting in here. Well, here I go, I can actually see a clip, there's a little clip here, and there's a clip here. It might not be destructive. Yes! Excellent! Come on, come out. Now... Right, so these are going to be data here, but... Uh, that one and that, these are the power ones, aren't they? That one and that one. So that's just going to be some kind of grey. Oh, here we go. Is that a cracked? No, maybe not. Thought it might be a cracked joint. So, what's blown? Power's going to come up here, I presume. What's on the opposite side there? Oh, so it just goes across to there and there. Right, okay. Checking for loose legs. So the helmet must have caused some sort of surge. Unless it is just coincidence, it is possible. Unlikely though. Big lumps of solder there. And that's a display, so really there's nothing there's nothing to this. Unless the chip itself has failed. Right, let's plug it in. And let's get the multimeter on here. Five volts there. Into the top of the transistor. Comes out at 1.98. Nothing. Point nine eight. I wonder has the transistor blown. So you can see it just lit up now really weak. Well, right, I'm going to get my soldering iron on because some of the joints I'm not overly happy with. But I can't see anything that's wrong with it. I'm just wondering if that transistor is not allowing the 5 volts through, whether it's just, uh, you know, whether it's only allowing, uh, what was it, 1.98 volts through. Let me just reflow a few things.
Well, I'm certain that's made no difference, but let's just see. No. So, is it that transistor? I'm going to zoom in and see if there's any markings on it. Right, so there it is, 65Z5, or 6525, I think it's a Z, 65Z5. Let me Google what that is. Right, it looks like it's a little voltage regulator. So, it says here, it says voltage regulator, SMD transistor. Three volt current, 140, sorry, three volts, current 140 milliamp, positive. Right, it says that input voltage is min 1.8 volts to 6 volts. So it's going to be 2, you know, around about 5 volts going into at 5.1. And output voltage 3 volts. But we haven't. We've got 1.98, haven't we? So uh, I think that's the problem. Let's take it off and see if we can get it in the component tester. So let's zoom in a minute. I wonder if I was to inject three volts onto this, would it uh, come alive from the bench power supply? So is this a ground, this one here? Let's have a look. I'm just gonna use this as a ground. Well, actually this will be a ground here. They're all ground, aren't they? Yeah. Right, so now, is that ground? Yes, it is. So we've got input, output, ground here. So let's get three volts onto here, ground onto here, and let's see whether the uh, meter comes alive. Then we'll know 100% the voltage regulator is faulty. Right, so I'm going up to three volts, but I'm going to keep the amps very, sh very, uh, very low. That I'm just going to have like 100 milliamps. There you go, 150 milliamps. Right, let's see if it comes alive. So we're gonna put this on here, and we're gonna put this on to, let me just see. Yeah, I don't think it matters if I slip because it's only gonna go over to ground there or to that pad, which is here. So let's see now, is it gonna liven up? Ready? Here. Yay, look, ah, oh, lovely sight again. Oh, look at that. Right, so the voltage regulator has gone. Look at that, lovely. Okay, right, so I wonder why that's failed. I'm just gonna pop it back on, just in case. I just put it on with my fingers. I'll just put pressure on it down, just in case it's uh, desold and it's made it come back to life. No. Okay. Oh, ow, wow, whoa, 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 hot, hot, hot. Right, okay, well, there we go. A hot component. <laughs> so yeah, that's failed. So I need to see if I've got one of them. Thing is, I don't think I'm gonna have one of them. It's gonna be a 3.3 .3 volt output. I wonder whether that's gonna make a difference. I don't think I'm gonna have a three volt one. Leave it with me, I'll see what I've got. If not, maybe I'll have to buy that particular one off eBay. Right, I found these. Yes, they are through hole, but I might have to do something with them. Uh, how much room have I got in here? Yeah, there's loads and loads of room. Loads of room for a transistor in there. Right, sorry, I know it's not a transistor, but I mean size-wise. Okay, so this one here is a... It's a three-terminal positive regulator employing internal current limiting and thermal shutdown. Basically, I think, but it's only 100 milliamps output current. I think the other one was 250, wasn't it? Not ideal. Uh, it is a positive voltage regulator. So the output current is, output voltage is of 3.35, so this one's the three, this is the 3.3 one. Let's pump in five volts into it and see what we get out. And let me just work out what the pin out is. So we are this one here, let's take one of them out. These things don't cost much anyway, like pennies. So it's going to be like that, yeah, and the one on the left here is number one, so that's voltage out, good. Pin two is voltage, uh, is ground, and this is going to be voltage in, so let's put five volts in here and ground here, and let's see what we get out here. 
Right, so that's five volts. Ground in the middle. And voltage in here. Let's see what we're going to get out on our meter. 3.3. I'm going to risk that. Yeah, let's see what it does. So I have to contort these legs into position. Obviously easier said than done because it's supposed to be through hole and these legs are not in the right position even though it's not through hole. So I've got to kind of like bend them into place. So I'm just doing that now and then uh, we can see what the meter does once this new voltage regulator is in place. Will it make a difference? That is 3.3 volts out instead of three volts. Let's find out. It's not reading five volts though, is it? Oh no, oh, that's annoying. Oh, it's not as simple as that, is it? So now it's only going to be outputting... If, uh, so now if I plug this into here, it's only going to be outputting 3.3 volts going into here. But it's saying 5 volts. Oh no, this is all gone very confusing. Oh, nah. Not going to work, is it? Because although it is still outputting 5 volts, it's giving the wrong reading here. Yeah, it's five volts out, but it's only reading. It's only reading that. Uh, is it because I've got 3.3 volts here then? Is that the problem? And I've got four volts going into that chip. Why have I got four volts going into the chip? What have I got here? Four volts? Why have I not got 3.3? If I was to put a resistor on that leg, would that knock it down to three volts, I wonder? See, right now it's reading four volts, which is a bit worrying. So I've got to get rid of a whole volt, haven't I? Now there's going to be a sum for that, isn't there? Or I could just try to see if I could buy the correct one, couldn't I? <laughs> Let me see if I can buy them. Right, I can buy them, but they're coming all the way from China, like a hundred of them or 50 of them or something for a few pounds yeah so you know it probably is worth doing that i just kind of want to mess around see if i can get something working now so there's different ways you can reduce down voltage but one of them is by using a voltage divider now it's not going to be the the best way of doing it because you're losing all this energy and heat which is not very efficient but this is only used for testing now i could do all this and it might not make a blind bit of difference i'm the original should be measuring three volts but maybe it's doing something that i don't know about and maybe it will never monitor current properly but I'd like to mess around with it to see if I can get it working. So basically, for a voltage divider to work, you have your voltage in here, and then it's got to go through two resistors, one of them going to ground, and then in between the resistors, so if you can imagine you have one resistor, then a jumper wire between that with another resistor, the jumper wire is where you're going to take your voltage out. So I know it's going to look a mess, but if I can put on the output, which is four volts, isn't it, on this one, if I can put, do you know what? Is it four volts when it's out of the circuit? Let me just see if that is the case. It's 4.3, it's gone higher. My word. Uh, okay. Well, I suppose it's going to vary with the input voltage, isn't it? Because the input voltage might never be that steady. Anyway, look. Okay, let's change that now. So if we had 1.4.3 uh, on that one, uh, if we have the jumper wire in the middle of it, that's going to be the voltage output the new voltage output so for example i've got here that we've got 4.3 volts going in and i'm just going through this to see which resistors i have in this pack here i know these are again through hole things so it's going to take up a lot of room but still let's just mess around so that's going to output 3.2 volts let's see what happens if i jump down on the resistance of the first one so let's go down to 68 ohms and now let's see what that will do no, so now we've gone up to 4.3. So let's jump this one up to 100 ohms. Now we're at 3.13. Uh, so what happens if we change this one to 220? We're getting closer. Ah, 2.95, so we're close there now, aren't we? 
So what I'm doing here is just playing around with the different voltage in because we're not always going to have 4.3 volts and trying to get a best fit option between the two resistors. So uh, yeah, I've, I've found two that I'm happy with. So let's solder them in and let's see what happens to the new output voltage. Now we have to join these two together and then have a jumper wire from here down to here or I can just kind of wrap these two together, which is the same thing, isn't it? Add a bit of solder to that and then put that leg down onto here. In fact, we should be able to uh, measure that now, shouldn't we? And see what kind of voltage we have on it to see if it's closer to three volts. Should we do that? So that's uh, on a website called uh, allaboutcircuits.com and it's called a voltage divider calculator. Quite nice, isn't it? Do you think it's gonna work? So we wanna see something close to three volts. Oh my word, look at that, oh look at that. It actually works out, maths has worked out for a change. I'm only joking, of course maths always works out, but how good is that? It's nice when you actually see it. Brilliant, right. I wonder whether when I solder that on, that's gonna then, uh, you know, actually do what it needs to do or not. Right, let's see if I can do this in a way that could actually be a lasting repair. Okay, so I've managed to cram it all down, but I haven't added glue or anything yet. It's, uh, everything is very close to each other, but I think I've gotten away with it. I've looked through my eye loop and I can see that there's no bridging of pads that are not already in contact with each other. And the legs of the uh, voltage regulator here are definitely separate. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Are we gonna have the same thing or is it gonna read properly now? Right, ready? Oh no, oh that's annoying. It's reading six volts now, what? What's that about? Oh, it's a lot easier to see like that. Oh, well, that's annoying. Maths didn't work itself out in this instance. I presume because I've now connected it into the circuit and it's not just floating in midair, it's uh, picking up different resistances from the circuit and it's throwing a wobbly from the readings that I want it to give. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to mess around with the resistors again to try to get it closer to five volts because we know that this is having five volts because it's USB. We can measure that with five volts. So we just need to get it close to five volts and hopefully then it will be working. It's just that I'm not sure how we're gonna get there apart from trial and error. Well, okay, what I did is, and it doesn't make any sense as far as the calculator's concerned, but uh, I went from 100 ohm down to 82 ohm for the first resistor and it knocked it down to about 5.7 volts. And then I just thought, I wonder what happened if I go over it again. So then I got another resistor and I just went over the top of that and that put it right down to five volts. So if you have a look here now, you can see we've got it down to five volts. I'm gonna get some glue now and uh, just throw it in this area here to kind of keep it in its place because everything's so close to shorting. And I think I'm just gonna order up the correct little chip from eBay. I'm just using some of the hot glue and I'm just gonna melt it down inside here. There we go. None of, none of that will short anywhere. Right, so that's it all put back together and it does appear to be charging this and it also seems to be registering an amp reading that looks pretty similar to this one here. So if I uh, do this one, you will see that we have 
5 volts, 5.09 and 0.25 amps, but it does vary around the place. So you've gone down to 0.10 of an amp now. I think this just varies up and down. But if you have a look here, it is reading a lower voltage, but I don't know, I think it's, I think it's close enough. So yeah, I'm happy with that and it's a nice bright, bright display. Problem is, because obviously I've just rammed a load of resistors in here, I don't really know, I don't, know, I don't think it can be relied on for a piece of test equipment because I'm trying to use this to fix something else. So we don't really want to put another variable in where it's uh, not working properly. So what I've done is I've bought a load of them from here. You can see that these are the, uh, the correct ones, 65Z5 and look how much I paid for it. So cheap. One pound fifty nine plus plus two pound postage for fifty of them. I could have bought a hundred of them for about fifty p more, which is just like you know like another penny each one. The thing is though, I know it sounds madness, but I'd rather have the fifty p than another fifty of them because I'm never going to get through fifty of these in my lifetime. I would say that there should be a market for someone in the UK and I presume other countries as well to be buying up stuff like this and then breaking them down into pairs fives and then selling them for like 50 times the price. I would have happily paid five pounds for five of these, happily, if it meant I could have delivery, delivery, apologies, I'm still getting over flu, uh, over the next, you know, like day or two, rather than having to wait a few weeks for them to come through from China, if they're going to come through from China. But still, for that low price there, it's worth the risk anyway. So uh, yeah, that is it. Uh, I actually quite enjoyed that one there. Not only did we find what the fault was, we then kind of got it working. Looks like it is sort of working. And uh, as well as that, we learned a little bit about voltage dividers as well. How to reduce the voltage down by using a voltage divider down to earth. And the T in the middle is where you actually tap into the voltage to get the voltage out. So uh, yeah, quite nice sometimes when you hear about things in theory. Sometimes it's nice to have things done in practice because it makes a little bit more sense in, well, in my head anyway. Uh, that is it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you very soon. Thanks so much for watching.